Hi guys, my name's Corinne from Encounter Youth, and today on You Got This, we're speaking with Pete from OCK Team. Welcome, Pete. Thanks for having me. Cool. All right, we'll start with some icebreakers. So if you could do anything for a day, what would you do? More. My anything for a day is probably to be a professional surfer, I would say. That would be a pretty nice thing, just to hang out and travel the world and surf all the beautiful beaches and follow the sun around. Can you tell us a few of your hobbies? But generally for me, anything outside, anything where um, we're outside in nature that is generally things I enjoy. So going for a walk with a dog or down by the beach, um, skateboarding, hanging out with mates, anything outside. I like to go running as well, which is something that just clears my mind and, and makes me feel fresh and alive. So. What is a fun fact about Pete Mann? Uh, a fun fact, which not too many people know is, um, the Octane's a coffee company, um, so we roast our own coffee. Um, one of the big stages in coffee roasting is watching the beans go from green to yellow before they go brown. Um, but I'm colourblind, so I can't tell the difference between uh, green and yellow. Often they get kind of confused. So a fun fact is that I am actually colourblind, but that ability where I can't see the colour change means that I smell the coffee more which means that my sort of perception of that stage of the roasting is all based on smell as opposed to, to smell and taste. So it's a little bit unique and a little bit of a fun fact. You finished school yep. did, and went to university to do teaching. Yeah. You're obviously not a teacher today. No. So can you talk us through what kind of caused that life change, I suppose? When I finished school, I, I was on the path to become a teacher because I didn't really know what else I wanted to do. And I was like, yep, yeah, I can do that. There's a job I can do. So I went through the process. I didn't get the results that I needed to get into teaching when I finished year 12. Um, I was a little bit lazy perhaps <laughs> and maybe a little bit distracted by everything else. But um, yeah, I didn't get the results. So I had to go through an arts degree. So I did a very general environmental studies degree. Uh, and then teaching at the end to get into teaching. Started teaching, doing relief work, bounced around different schools and eventually sort of landed at some contract positions and some permanent stuff. And this was over the journey of five, six, seven years. Probably at the same time I was learning more about coffee and I was just falling in love with it. And I was like, all right, how do I make that my career as opposed to teaching? So I sort of slowly transitioned out. Started working in cafes, different cafes around the place to make that my career. And then eventually, yeah, probably three years ago, took the plunge and said, all right, no more teaching. We're, we're now opening cafes and, and doing that side of things. Yeah, can you talk to us about how, how did you go from, yeah, teaching and, and really more or less a nine to five job yeah. to opening cafes and working for yourself? I think it was a bit of a combination about how I'm spending my time. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we work, everyone works a lot. The majority of your time spent is at work. And I was like, am I enjoying what I'm doing teaching? And there was parts of it that I enjoyed. Um, but the more I learnt about um, hospitality in general, probably being around people um, and having control over my own business and control over how I was spending my time, the draw of that became more than staying in a stable teaching job. But I wanted to spend my time doing things that I wanted to do. And, and that was creating my own business and, and doing it that way. Um, and look, the worst thing that can happen is it fails. I'm totally okay with failure. And if that's I mean, one thing that we can take away is that it's okay to fail. It absolutely is. If you're doing something you love and that you want to do, if it fails, no big deal. It's amazing what you think of when you're put under the pump or when it's something that you really want to do. So you know, I've definitely learned that over the last couple of years. Did you see a gap for what you wanted to bring to the cafe culture in Adelaide uh, or more, yeah, more broadly South Australia? Yeah, I did. And it was during that time when I was, literally I was teaching, but I was going to cafes, working in cafes and just doing as much research as I could at, at what was out there. Yeah. Um, so opening a cafe is, is one thing. Um, we're a coffee company where we roast our own product as well. So that was one point of difference which I wanted to identify straight away, which sets us apart from any other cafe who may use another coffee roaster. Um, and then I also wanted to set it up um, to be different in terms of creating a brand and a lifestyle. Our point of difference was how do I create something which stands out? Um, and then I, again, more research, what are companies which stand out? And I was listening to a lot of podcasts at the time. Um, and one of them was, I can't even remember what the podcast was, but it was talking about how Steve Jobs created Apple. He basically created two things which he loved, which was design uh, and technology, and created Apple. I was like, oh, right. <laughs> Easy, right? <laughs> what are two things that I love? I was like, well, I love coffee, um, and I love being outside. I love adventure. I love all those two things. So I was like, all right, well, that's the brand. Let's put those two together and, and go from there. So 
that's how Octane started. Um, Octane is effect effectively, you know, fuel and energy for adventure. So sort of played off that with the name, Octane and Caffeine together is Octane. And we just sort of um, built off that. What advice would you give to young people looking to start a business? I think the most important thing about starting a business is that you're not in it for money. You've got to be passionate about whatever it is you're doing. Um, and from your perspective, you've got to be thinking of a problem that you can solve or something that you can add value to. I feel like if you're going in to, to start a small business to make millions of bucks, it's not necessarily the right way to go about it um, because that mindset will change how you look and how you interact with your customers. And I don't think that's the best interaction from my personal opinion. Year 12s are often told that this is the most important year of their life. Um, what would you say about this statement and what are your thoughts on it? Uh, well, coming from a school teacher background of year 12s, um, quite often see the, the importance that is put on a, the year 12, you know, your year 12. I think, it, or I used, always used to explain it to the kids, is it's an opportunity for you to test yourself for the very first time. You know, this is the, the first sort of real test of how you're gonna go with something which is, I guess, judged by society. Because everyone, society judges, how did you go in year 12? The reality is that it doesn't really matter. It's an opportunity for you to test yourself. If you excel, great. If you fail, great. If you learn something about yourself along the way, great. I don't think your result is important. You can change, chop, move all over the place with different careers and jobs. You can do future training years after. It's just your first opportunity to test yourself uh, and to see how you go. What's some encouragement for Year 12s um, if they haven't perhaps gotten the grades that they wanted or they don't get into the, into the course that they want? Advice for Year 12s that perhaps don't get the results they after or anything like that um, would be just to continue doing what you love. Everything works its way out. <laughs> You're so young, 17, 18, 19 years old. I didn't start Octane until I was 25, 26. I didn't start working in it until I was late 20s. Um, I didn't know anything about coffee, so I can use my Excel as an example that you'll be able to work it out. Um, but I guess it's just a confidence or looking around and chatting to people and seeing that you know, your year 12 isn't your be or an end all. So what's some encouragement that you could pass on to the year 12 in what's been a pretty turbulent year for them as they've completed year 12? Yeah, a crazy year, but it's been a crazy year for everyone. So I feel like everyone is in a similar situation um, and I feel like people are understanding of these events. Even my customers understand if I can't get a delivery one day, it's because of COVID things, it's okay. There's, there's that general understanding. So if you're a year 12 finishing this year, people are gonna understand that you've, you've graduated this year. There's uni students that are graduating this year. There's people that are doing all sorts of things this year under different circumstances. So I think having the understanding um, that everyone is in the same boat would be a good thing. Do you have anything else you want to say to the class of 2020? Um, the one thing I would say to Year 12s potentially is just to be yourself, get out there, have a great time, spend time with family and friends. Um, COVID's one thing, but everyone's in it together. So keep doing you and you'll be fine. Hey, class of 2020, I'm Pete from Octene and you've got this.